Hello everyone. Question number one is, which option is a reflexive pronoun? So you are given four options here and you have to pick reflexive pronoun among the given ones. So if I talk about him, him is a personal pronoun and it is used in objective case. You can also call it object pronoun or in broader terms, it is a personal pronoun. Each other, if I talk about each other, it is a reciprocal pronoun. You should know all the options, right? So that in your exam, if you get any of these words, you should know that which pronoun it is, which type of pronoun it is. If I talk about which, it is an interrogative as well as a relative pronoun. It can act as interrogative also. It can act on, it can act as relative pronoun also depending on the usage in a sentence. But for sure it is not reflexive pronoun. So we are left with only one option which is herself. So let me tell you. The words ending in self are reflexive pronouns. For example, for I it is myself, for he it is himself, likewise for she. For personal pronoun she, it is herself. There are many more like ourselves, themselves. Okay, so herself is the reflexive pronoun among the given options. So definitely right answer is option C. Next is question number two. Which option is an adjective? If I talk about ever, easily, and seldom. All these three are adverbs. Seldom is an adverb, ever and easily are also adverbs. Now, we are left with only one option here, which is not an adverb. There is a myth. Some students believe that all words ending in ly are adverbs. Right? But it's not true. No doubt. There are maximum words which end in L-Y are and are adverbs, but it's not necessary that every word ending in L-Y will be an adverb. No, not every word ending in L-Y will be an adverb. Sometimes it can be an adjective also. Likewise, uh, stately. Stately is such a word. In this case, if we see stately is such a word which ends in L-Y but is not an adverb. It's an adjective rather. You can use it to describe a noun. For instance, you can say a tall, stately woman. And what does it mean? Stately here means impressive. Stately means impressive. Impressive in size, in appearance, in manner, the way he or she is behaving. Okay, yes, it means impressive in general. So, a tall, stately woman means a tall, impressive woman. Now, let's come to question number three, which is our next question. Which option is a strong verb? So, now firstly, you should know what are strong verbs. Strong verbs are also called irregular verbs. And irregular verbs or strong verbs are those verbs which don't form their past or past participle form by adding ed at the end. No, the words which uh, the verbs which form their past and past participle form by adding ed to it at the end are regular verbs. But if I talk about strong verbs, they don't add ed in their end to form their past or past participle form. And we have to find such a verb here. If I talk about burn, its past form is burned. So definitely not a strong verb. Spoil, spoiled, not a strong verb. Weep is slightly different, but it also ends in T. Okay, weep, wept, wept. So definitely not a strong verb. Strong verbs are those which, firstly, they don't add ED at the end. Right, as I told you earlier. Secondly, their past and past participle forms are formed by making changes to 
vowel in these verbs as is the case with verb c c is a strong verb as you can see its past form is so we have not added ed at the end first thing secondly we have made uh, made changes to vowel and then formed its past form so such verbs are strong verbs c is definitely the right answer because its past form is so and past participle form is c so definitely the right answer of this question is option c next we have question number 4 which option is a synonym of this word instill instill means to inject okay instill can also mean that sometimes you you put some idea some attitude in a person's mind that is also instilling a quality an idea in someone's mind instill can also mean injecting something injecting a substance to a person or an animal's body so instill is the synonym of inject if i talk about other words distill you must have heard a term in science distillation distill is a verb distillation is noun it's a process okay so distill basically means when you heat a liquid to make it pure until it becomes a gas okay firstly you heat a liquid to make it pure until it becomes gas then what do you do then you cool it again to collect those liquid drops again this time pure ones okay so that is distill if i talk about instigate instigate means to make something happen sometimes to make something bad happen okay but it generally means to make something start or to make something happen if i talk about imbibe imbibe means to drink something especially an alcohol to drink something so definitely these words are not related to instill if i talk about the word similar to instill it is inject among the given options so definitely right answer is option b let's talk about question number 5 now which option is an antonym of mitigate this time we have to pick the opposite meaning of mitigate So firstly let's see what is mitigate Mitigate means to make something less strong to make something less strong or you can say to lessen the effects of something to reduce the effects of something to make something less strong in the severity okay to make it less strong if i talk about alleviate and abate both these words are synonyms of mitigate okay they both have similar meanings abate also means to make something less strong or to become less strong alleviate also means the same mitigate to make something less strong instigate we have already discussed this word in the last question as well let me tell you again the meaning to make something happen that is instigate to make something happen now let's see this word intensify you see intensify means you are increasing the intensity of something right it is the opposite of mitigate you can say it means to make something more strong more severe okay so mitigate to lessen the effects of something intensify to increase its intensity so that's why opposite will be option c intensify next one which option is a homonym trunk briefcase suitcase or hold on now see before answering this question you should have an idea of homonyms what are homonyms sometimes you must have seen some words which are spelled same and pronounced also same 
but have different meanings. Such words are called homonyms. Okay, which are spelled same, pronounced same, but have different, different meanings. So, if I talk about briefcase, suitcase and hold all, they are not at all homonyms because they have only one meaning. They are one word of this kind. They have only one meaning. All these words mean a large bag which you use to carry clothes, especially when you uh, when you are traveling, when you when you travel to some place, so you carry briefcase, suitcase, or hold all with you, which is a large bag to carry clothes. If I talk about trunk, trunk is also same, like it's also used for a large bag, but along with that, it can have other meanings also. As you can see. An organ of an elephant is also called trunk, right? An organ of an elephant or a tree, right? That is also called trunk. So that's why this word is homonym. Option A. Question number seven says, which option is not correctly spelled? So this time you have to pick the word with the incorrect spelling. Joystick, correct. This one is correct in spelling. Drumstick is also spelled correctly. Yardstick, again, correctly spelled. But look at this word, realistic. Spelling of realistic is not this. Uh, realistic, this word doesn't have K in it, right? That's why this is our right answer. And let me tell you the right spelling also. Realistic. You just need to remove K from the given spelling. Okay, otherwise it's correct. Just remove K. Realistic. This is the correct spelling. So, the given word with incorrect spelling is realistic, which is option C. Now, interesting. Next question is very interesting. Which option is not a past tense? Related, elated, debated or abated? Which one is not a past tense? So, Basically, you have to pick that word which is not a verb. Because if it's not a verb, it can never have past tense, right? Only verbs have past or uh, past participle forms and they can form, you know, past tense. Relate is a verb. Okay, related adjective also, related is adjective also, but relate is a verb also. So that's why related can be V2. Okay, it can be past form of verb relate. So, not the right answer. If I talk about debated, it is also past form of verb debate. Debate can also act as a verb. So, that's why debated is a past form of verb debate. Abated, again. It is also past form of verb abate. So, these two options can also be ruled out. Now we are left with only one option, which is elated. Elated, no doubt it has ed at the end, but it is not a verb. This word is an adjective rather. It's an adjective. Elated is not a verb, it's an adjective. And if I talk about the meaning of this word, elated means happy and excited. So, definitely option B is our correct answer, elated. Let's talk about question number 9 now. Which option completes the irreversible word pair blank and dagger correctly? So, basically, uh, when you complete this now, when you fill this blank, it will form an adjective. Okay, this word acts as, uh, this phrase basically acts as an adjective and the right phrase is clock and dagger. It's not knife and dagger or spear and dagger or blade and dagger. No, it's clock and dagger. Now, what does this mean? Activities which are secret, okay, or something which is secret or mysterious 
Okay, that is cloak and dagger. Cloak and dagger means secret or mysterious. For instance, you can, it's an adjective I told you, right? So you can use it like this. You can say cloak and dagger operation. Okay, means if you want to say that uh, there is a very mysterious operation, there is a secret operation. So you can call it like this cloak and dagger operation which means secret or mysterious operation. So definitely right answer in this case is option A, which is clock. Now let's come to question number 10, in which you have to tell the syllables, correct syllables of the word courageous. The word is courageous. Means brave. So this word has three syllables. If I tell you the number, it's three. So count these. One, two. Incorrect. One, two. Incorrect. One, two, three, four. Incorrect again. This one. Three syllables uh, this word has, which is, which are like this. C-O-U-R-A-G-E-O-U-S together. Courageous. Okay, so these three syllables this word has. So definitely Right answer is option D. Now, let's come to question number 11. Which option can be a collective noun? Now, this question, you know, the options seem quite interesting. Bat, ball, catch, wicket. All terms are related to cricket, right? So, cricket fans uh, must be excited seeing these options. Bat, ball, catch and wicket. But do you know? One, one word among these is a collective noun also. Okay, and what are collective nouns? Collective nouns are basically name of a group. Okay, noun is a name and collective shows collection. So, name of a collection, name of a group is a collective noun. So, which word among uh, these options is a collective noun also? So, that word, let me tell you, is catch. Okay. You can use this word catch uh, to name a group. For example, you call a catch of fish. Okay. A catch of fish. But none of these, like bat, ball, or wicket, is a collective noun. Okay. Only catch among these is a one which can act as collective noun like catch of fish. I have given an example also a catch of fish. So definitely right answer is option C. Okay. In question number 12, you have to tell which option can be an adverb. Fast, lonely, holy, timely. Now again, as I already told you in one of the questions, not every word ending in ly will be an adverb, right? Sometimes it can be adjective also. So, words ending in ly are not always adverbs. They can be adjectives also. That's why lonely, timely, holy are not adverbs. Though they have ly at the end, but that doesn't mean they are adverbs. Okay, they are adjectives rather. Let me give you examples also to make you understand in a better way how these are uh, adjectives and not adverbs. See, I can say lonely boy, lonely girl, lonely student, right? I have used it, I used it as an adjective. Timely, for example, I can say timely reminder. So you see, Again, I have used this word as an adjective to qualify this noun, reminder. Let's come to holy now. I can say holy books. Again, holy is an adjective qualifying noun, books. Now, let's have a look at this word, fast. This is the right answer. Fast can be adjective also. Fast can be adverb also, okay? But none of these words, lonely, timely, or holy, can be 
uh, adverbs okay they are only and only adjectives but if i talk about past it can act as adjective also and adverb also let me give examples for both of these as an adjective fast baller okay here it is an adjective qualifying noun baller what if i have to use it as an adverb means it should qualify a verb or an adjective or an another adverb right so let me tell you example for that also the baller balled very fast in this case if you see this fast is not qualifying noun bowler rather it is qualifying this verb bold so in this case it is acting as an adverb so definitely right answer is option a fast next is question number 13 which option is the sound a frog makes so which sound frog makes bleat chirp croak or glug let me tell you it is croak okay so i can say frogs croak right the sound of frog is croak what if i talk about bleat bleat is the sound made by sheep or goat next one is chug chug is the sound that an engine engine or motor makes okay sound made by an engine or a motor that is chug what is this glug glug is that sound which you heard when you pour some liquid okay a sound which is heard when you pour a small amount of liquid when you pour out a small amount of liquid or any drink that sound is glug so definitely bleat chug and glug can be eliminated clearly you can see bleat is a sound made by sheep or goat chug is the sound made by engine or motor glug is that sound which you heard when you pour out a small quantity of liquid or uh, any liquid or any drink okay now we are left with only croak so croak is a sound which a frog makes so c is the right answer question number 14 asks which option can be an infinitive or the v1 first form of verb if i talk about brow these are brows right these are brows ear or tooth these three words are only and only nouns but if i talk about eye it is a noun also and it can act as a verb also okay i is a noun no doubt part of a body name of a part of a body but it can act as verb also as a verb it means to look at something or somebody carefully okay especially when you want something and you are looking at it or you see that uh, something wrong is happening and you are looking at it carefully so that is i as a verb okay so which word can be an infinitive it is definitely option b i now let's take question number 15 he stood right in a way is it is the underlined word which is right is it an adverb an adjective a noun or a verb so it depends on the word it is qualifying to in this sentence so if i look at this sentence carefully right is qualifying this verb stood how did he stand or okay how did he stand so answer is right how did he stand qualifying this verb okay right here is qualifying this verb and the word which qualifies the verb is called an adverb okay adverb is the word which qualifies a verb an adjective or an another adverb 
okay for an another adverb so that word is an adverb in this case it is qualifying a verb stood so that's why it is adverb option t in this question you have to tell above the part of speech of this underlined word above again it will depend on the word it is qualifying to read the above passage passage is a noun right passage is a noun which passage above passage below passage following passage so this word above here is qualifying this noun passage and we all know words which qualify a noun or a pronoun are called adjectives okay adjectives are those words which qualify a noun or a pronoun in this case above is qualifying this noun passage so definitely it is an adjective so that's why the right answer is option c next is question number 17 all the milk blank used up is has have been or could now see here we have to make this sentence in passive voice why because the subject milk is not doer here okay milk is not using something milk is being used up here right so here subject is not a doer rather a receiver that's why this sentence should be in passive voice and for milk definitely i can't use have right I can't use plural verb for uncountable noun. Uncountable nouns are always singular and take singular verbs. Could used up doesn't make any sense. Moreover, after modal verbs we only use first form of verb, not past or past participle form. Now we are left with is or has. Now to make a sentence passive, there should be be form in it, and after that past participle form of verb should be there. past participle form is given and be form of verb is required and be forms of verb are is am are was were be been or be okay so definitely has is not a be form of verb is is a right answer next we have question number 18 in india one finds a blank of phrases medium medium of races mediation mediation is you know attempts to end a fight a quarrel a conflict between two or more groups okay so that is mediation attempt to end a fight mammoth uh, mammoth means a large creature or it can also mean very large extremely large huge doesn't make any sense the right answer will be madly okay what is madly Medley is a mixture of things. Okay, of different kinds. Medley is a mixture of things of different different kinds. So definitely in India, one can find a medley of races. Means different different uh, kinds of races. That's why right answer is option D. Now this question: The MLA as well as his brother Blank going to prison. Now see, whenever you find two subjects connected with, as well as with, along with, together with. Okay, whenever you find this structure in any sentence, so. verb should come according to the first subject okay it will not be it will not get affected by this thing as well as as the and the subject written after it no verb will depend only on subject one which is the mla in this case and it is singular that's why is is the right answer and rest of the options can be eliminated next and the last question not the last one we have many more to cover Okay, so next question is: Each of the teachers blank willing to join the picnic. Each of, whenever you find this written, each of. Let me tell you a very important rule. After each of, a noun should always be plural, and 
the verb following it should always be singular. Very, very important rule. Kindly take a note of it. After each of, a noun is uh, written in plural form. But verb following it will be in singular form. Each of. Teachers. Noun is plural. Correct. Now we have to fill a verb in this blank, which should be singular. Plural, plural, plural. Eliminated. The only singular verb given here is, is, which is the right answer of this question. Each of the teachers is willing to join the picnic. 